ಧರ್ಮ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ವೆಲ್ ನೋನ್ ದಟ್ ಸನಾತನ ಧರ್ಮ ರೆಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಪ್ಲೂರಲಿಸಮ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಡೈವರ್ಸಿಟಿ ಇನ್ ಸ್ಪೈಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಡೈವರ್ಸಿಟಿ ಇಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಸವರಲ್ ಯೂನಿಫೈಯಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ವಿಚ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಪ್ರಭಾಕರನ್ ಜಿ ಎಲುಸಿಟೇಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ಎ ವಂಡರ್ಫುಲ್ ವೇ ಅಂಡ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಎಸ್ಟಾಬ್ಲಿಷ್ಡ್ ದಟ್ ದೀಸ್ ಯೂನಿಫೈಯಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಫೌಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ತಮಿಳ್ ಕಲ್ಚರ್ among those unifying factors one of the most important unifying factors is the veda about which he also told starting from himalayas to kanyakumari everywhere we see the veda whether it is kashmiri shaivism or gujarati vaishnavism you go to anybody perhaps you go to a gujarati vaishnavite scholar and ask him what is our foundation he will definitely tell you veda is our foundation same with kashmiri shaivite same with uh, same with gaudiya vaishnavite or manipur vaishnavite and uh, if you go if you come to tamil nadu also you may go to a shri vaishnavite alwars and acharyas like shri ramanuja acharya not only vedanta desikar but also manaval mamunigal appreciates the veda and uh, considers the consider the veda as the greatest pramana pramana means instrument of knowledge pramana of dharma and god the same way in shaiva siddhantam jnana sambandhar appar trimula they all glorify the veda oh, what is there in the veda why this is great how this veda becomes a common thread of all these uh, streams of sanatana dharma all these uh, rituals customs uh, uh, faiths uh, philosophies and schools of thoughts everywhere why this common stream occur occurs a yeah, normal pious hindu if you ask him why veda is so important he will simply say that veda is apaurusheya he he will use use the word apaurusheya and he also will say the veda is free of errors because it is apaurusheya of course this comes in uh, paripadal sangam literature kedu il kelvi yul nadu ahudalum this is a this is from the second chapter of uh, paripadal 25th line kedu il means veda is flawless and why veda is taken to be flawless it's because veda has no beginning and end it says maya vaimoli this is also from paripadal this is from third poem sangam literature maya vaimoli veda never gets destroyed paripadal says so this is sanatana okay this is the tamilian faith in sangam literature so we need to contemplate on why veda is considered to be apaurushaya apaurushaya literal meaning is uh, veda is free of human authorship veda enjoys a freedom of human authorship what does it mean it has lots of interpretations one mimamsaka mimamsa philosophy mimamsa school of thought says meticulously every word of the veda is preserved for time immemorial with the great uh, redundancy techniques like uh, krama jata ghana so on and so forth therefore veda is apaurushay veda was not in written form it was orally handed over for a simple reason that only by memorizing it it can be preserved preserved meticulously this is told in kurundogai 156th line எழுதா கற்பின் நின் சொல்லுள்ளும் வேதா இஸ் கால்ட் அஸ் எழுதா கற்பு இன் சங்கம் லிட்ரேச்சர் அக்கார்டிங் டு வேதாந்தா பிலாசபி வேதா இஸ் கால்ட் அஸ் அப்போருஷேயா நாட் ஜஸ்ட் பிகாஸ் மெட்டிகுலஸ்லி இட் இஸ் பிரிசர்வ்ட் பை த ஸ்காலர்ஸ் பட் பிகாஸ் திஸ் திஸ் வேதா இஸ் ஹேண்டட் ஓவர் பை த காட் ஹெட் த கிரியேட்டர் திஸ் வாட் திஸ் இஸ் அ பிலீஃப் இன் வேதாந்தா 
திஸ் இஸ் ஆல்சோ எகைன் டோல்ட் இன் சங்கம் லிட்ரேச்சர் புறநானூறு ஒன் ஹண்ட்ரட் அண்ட் சிக்ஸ்டி சிக்ஸ் சாங் நன்று ஆய்ந்த நீள் நிமிறு சடை முழு முதல்வன் முது முதல்வன் வாய் போகாது ஸோ ஈஸ்வரா இஸ் கிவிங் திஸ் வேதா த முதல்வன் முதல்வன் மீன்ஸ் த ஃபர்ஸ்ட் பீயிங் த சுப்ரீம் பீயிங் இஸ் கிவிங் கான்ஸ்டன்ட்லி த வேதிக் லிட்ரேச்சர் டு த ரிஷிஸ் these are all the references from sangam literature regarding the veda so many references can be given but the idea is it is aparusheya because it is given by god according to vedanta it is aparusheya because it is uh, meticulously preserved in mimamsa philosophy and one more thing it is aparusheya because the the resonance the sound of the veda is uh, believed to be the primordial vibration of the universe again this also comes in paripadal the third song vai moli odai malarnda thamarai poovinul pirandonum while talking about brahma deva vai moli odai the stream of the vedic sound about which paripadal is talking about anyhow uh, these are the very important references coming back to the point in my view in in my view the veda means apur veda is apurushaya for a vital reason veda is called as free of uh, uh, human free it is free from human authorship this can be interpreted as veda is free from human prejudices this is i view about this what is this prejudice always we have among humans various prejudices based on based on race caste creed religion gender color so on and so forth but here is a literature is not a small literature like hanuman chalisa a vast literature the vedic mantras of rigveda samhita taitriya samhita and samaveda samhita a vast literature nowhere in this vedic literature we can see a notion of one class a notion of the inferiority of a particular class nowhere we can see the notion of one class is superior to another class among humans this kind of notion is not found in this vast literature it's a very important uh, uh, thing we need to a very very important observation yes such a vast literature this has to be contemplated throughout this vedic literature i mean vedic mantras we never see anywhere these kinds of prejudices this is uh, this is my view therefore this has to be this this is a vital reason for which veda has to be accepted as apaurusheya and uh, i am not joking i am not hyperbolic here i am not exaggerating i mean it any scholar can challenge me regarding this if somebody can quote any mantra any mantra from vedic literature uh, that shows the prejudice or that shows the uh, what to say the notion of some class is inferior to another class if if somebody is capable he can do it he can challenge me it is this i am presenting in front of you okay. <laughs> of course one mantra is quite often quoted i want to deal with this pabyam uh, shudraha ajayata in purusha sukta shudra is born of feet of purusha this mantra is taken to be uh, uh, um, it represents the notion of shudra inferiority for this this mantra is quoted and in fact a very great scholars like dr ambedkar of are of this opinion and ambedkar is uh, wondering he is wondering the whole of the rigvedic literature has no such thing and this mantra must be an interpolation in the rigveda it's because as in the whole of rigveda we don't see such a kind of inferiority notion this is what he says and he wants to again and again establish that this mantra 
is against rigveda that is how if you go to the if you read the book who are shudras you can see this but what i feel is padyam shudra ajayata in that you never see the shudra inferiority at all because to the vedic seers nowhere in the veda again no limb is considered to be inferior or superior please understand this we may have these ideas but in the vedic literature no limb of a human being is taken to be inferior or superior in anywhere in the veda that's a very important thing then why shudra is considered to be uh, the feet of purusha for this i want to take another mantra just before this purusha suktam in rigveda the 10th mandala 87th sukta 10th mantra there is another mantra where the word moolam is used to for feet treda moolam yatu dhanasya vrischa moolam is used to for feet and all commentators come to this moolam as feet why why moolam is used to for feet it's because feet in the veda in many places means foundation shudra dharma is a foundation of the society that is a purport of padyam shudra ajayata vayu purana even though it is very uh, later compared to the veda rightly interprets shudra dharma as the foundation that is how this vedic mantra is interpreted in vayu purana coming back to another point i was just contemplating while seeing this mantra now how many places the word shudra comes in rigveda or in the whole of the vedic samhita in rigveda samhita only one place padyam shudra ajayata and in samaveda nowhere and in yajur samhita yajur veda samhita maybe in six places six places let me take few of these mantras here yad grame edaranye yad sabayam edindriye yad chudre edariya enas chakruma vayam this mantra is regarding the atonement the sin which i have committed against the village in the forest in the assembly the sin i have committed against the vaishya or shudra for which i repent this is this mantra's meaning here also you don't have any derogative derogatory statement regarding shudra another mantra shudra riyo adisrujyetam this talks about the creation of uh, uh, the classes and next mantra rucham visheshu shudreshu mai dehi rucha rucham o lord please give knowledge to brahmana kshatriya that is rajanya vaishya and shudra again it is about importing knowledge to shudra this mantra next mantra brahmane brahmanam alabate kshatraya rajanyam marudhya vaishyam tapase shudram this is another mantra on uh, brahmane brahmanam alabate is brahmana represents brahma tejas rajanya represents valor vaishya represents vitals marut i take as vital okay and shudram tapase shudra represents tapasya this is a mantra from krishna yajurveda and next mantra yathemam vacham kalyanim avadani janebhya brahma rajanyabhyam shudra yacha arya yacha swaya charana yacha may i recite this mantra for brahmana rajanya shudra and vaishya uh, these are the six places where the word shudra comes in uh, yajurveda mantras nowhere you can see anything against shudra in this passage in, in this passages of the vedic but that, that's why i'm quoting this and regarding the classes the veda talk about the unity we all know this mantra this is the end of rigveda Okay. anything which comes in the end in the veda represents the uh, uh, essence of the whole of the veda okay so this mantra samano mantraha samiti samani samanam manaha saha chittam esham samanam mantram abhimantraye vaha samanena vo havisha juhomi mantra is common for the society samiti samani assembly is common samanam manaha we, let us all have a common mind and a common kind of resolution and let us let us plan for the common welfare samanam mantram abhimantriye vaha and let us have a common worship with a common oblation samanena vaha havisha juhomi and let me quote few other mantras sira yunjanti kavayaha 
this mantra says farmers while describing farmers uh, they are called as kavayaha kavayaha in the veda means seers seeraha farmers are called as seers and another mantra is a very famous mantra takshabhyaha ratakarebhyascha o namaha kulalebhyah karmarebhyascha o namaha punjishtebhyah nishadebhyascha o namaha ishukrubhyah dhanvakrubhyascha o namaha ಮೃಗಯುಭ್ಯ ಸ್ವನಿಭ್ಯಶ್ಚ ಓ ನಮಃ ಸ್ವಭ್ಯ ಸ್ವಪತಿಭ್ಯಶ್ಚ ಓ ನಮಃ ತಕ್ಷಭ್ಯ ತಕ್ಷ ಇನ್ ತಮಿಳ್ ವಿ ಕಾಲ್ ಇಟ್ ಅಸ್ ತಕ್ಷನ್ ತಕ್ಷಭ್ಯ ಓ ನಮಃ ಐ ಬೋ ಡೌನ್ ಟು ಕಾರ್ಪಂಟರ್ಸ್ ರಥಕಾರೇಭ್ಯ ಚಾರಿಯಟ್ ಮೇಕರ್ಸ್ ಸಲ್ಯೂಟೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಟು ಪಾಟ್ ಮೇಕರ್ಸ್ ಕುಲಾಲೇಭ್ಯ ಸಲ್ಯೂಟೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಟು ಸ್ಮಿತ್ಸ್ ಆಂಡ್ ಸಲ್ಯೂಟೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಟು ಬರ್ಡ್ ಕೀಪರ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಹಂಟರ್ಸ್ ಪುಂಜಿಷ್ಟೇಭ್ಯ ನಿಷಾದೇಭ್ಯಶ್ಚ ಓ ನಮಃ salutations to weapon makers dhanvakrubhyascha salutations to dog keepers and also dogs sobhya swapati bhyascha o namaha this is a mantra this comes exactly in the center of krishna yajurveda therefore this is taken to be the heart of yajurveda in traditions and up to our times the great jagat gurus in the pitas can be shingeri or kanchi while doing puja every day chandramolishwar puja every day they chant this mantra punjishte bihanisha de bischa o namaha the great jagat gurus are chanting this mantra every day like our brothers are every day chanting allah is only god okay here we chant this takshabhya ratakare bischa o namaha salutations to carpenters and smiths we see the divine in them this is what we see <coughs> and uh, now we saw about the class how no class is considered to be inferior or superior this is what we saw in the veda while talking about this i wish to quote a researcher his name is harari you may be knowing he has written a very famous book sapiens he is a israel researcher he says the medieval age is filled with a lot of prejudices and the notion of class inferiority so on and so forth but long ago there was an era in the human world in which the humans were not at all having the notion of class inferiority and they neither had the notion of this is very important notion of animal inferiority animals were not considered humans never knew long back that humans are superior to animals and birds there was an era this he says why i am uh, wishing to quote it this is because i strongly feel after reading harari i strongly feel the veda has to be definitely uh, veda veda uh, predates this this medieval age which is filled with prejudices veda belongs to that era where even animals were not considered as inferior to humans it's a very important uh, thing you can never see, again this is another declaration <laughs> in the veda i mean in the vedic mantras in vedic samhitas you can never see anywhere a proclamation that humans are superior to animals and birds this is another interesting thing and the respect they had to animals for which i quote uh, two mantras here one murgaha prakshakrnoti here the rigveda says this is a fifth mandala 75th sukta fourth mantra uh, murgaha can be taken as animal or deer stag a stag stag offers oblation such a kind of statement is there it means yagya element can be found even among stags even among animals this is one one interesting thing another another uh, interesting mantra in the ninth mandala ibho rajeva suvrataha the god soma is extolled where it comes as uh, soma is like an elephant here the adjective for that elephant is suvrataha one who has a good vrata so the rigvedic seer observes that elephant has a good vrata i, I don't want to go to the explanation of what vrata elephant has but vrata in elephant is observed yagya 
uh, spirit in the stag is observed in the rigveda these are all very interesting thing <coughs> i also wa- want to add here even in ramayana the original text of valmiki starting from ayodhya kanda to yuddha kanda you can never see anywhere any derogatory statement against shud- against shudra or any other class is a very important thing and you can never see anywhere uh, the proclamation that the humans are uh, animals and birds are inferior as a very interesting thing regarding ramayana now let us go to the gender prejudice some mantras are quite often quoted for the gender prejudices in the rigveda some two or three mantras let me take those mantras and uh, give explanation one mantra from the 8th mandala 33rd sukta striya ashasyam manaha women's mind cannot be brought under control this this rigvedic uh, mantra is there this has to be interpreted in this way this previous mantra indra is extolled in this way nahishastava no mama shastre anyasya ranyati indra's mind cannot be brought under control by anybody this is so indra is extolled indra is not uh, put down in this way indra is extolled then women's mind cannot be brought under control there also we have to take this is the praise of a woman praise of a woman let me give an example sorry compliment, compliment to the uh, let me give an example for this in my commentary of the veda i have given this example only sitamma sita's mind cannot be brought under control by ravana and the next statement you see uto aha kratum ragum but her heart is soft this is the next one woman's mind cannot be brought under control but her heart is soft this is the mantra we need to um, understand with the context next mantra which they quote for women's uh, derogatory statement adav pashyasve okay it, veda gives an injection here oh woman look down adav pashyasve we need again to interpret this mantra with the context the whole of the mantra you need to see adav pashyasva ma upari santaram patakau hare if you see the whole of the mantra you can understand when a man with a malicious intention come there how a woman should be there the veda says don't be garish don't be showy too much and there it says don't have an eye contact and look down this is what it says therefore you can't take it as a derogatory statement against women and the mantra ends with this statement strihi brahma babu vita oh woman you are brahman this is how it ends therefore it's not a derogatory statement <laughs> this is the uh, eighth mandala 18th sukta this mantra now let me quote few other mantras which talk the glory of women you see this samragi sosure bhava samragi sosuram bhava nanandari samragi bhava samragi adi devrushu while the bride bride is uh, entering into the new house this mantra is chanted even up to our times o oh woman o oh bride be the queen samragi be the queen of father in your father in law your mother in law and your sisters in law and your brothers in law another mantra vasini tum vidatham avadasi address the assembly uh, controlling the audience vasini tum vidatham have the control over audience and address the assembly women is ad, um, uh, advised to you women is addressed here vasini tum vidatham avadasi another mantra highly feministic <laughs> murdhanam patiraro hai <laughs> place your foot upon your husband's head these are the mantras <laughs> i'm quoting from the veda v- vedas and you see various vedic seers are women women uh, mantra uh, seers are there not one or two in hundreds they are there that's very interesting and here is a rishi his name is aushija aushija says avo ruvanyum aushijaha huvadhyai gosheva samsam arjunasya namshe he says aushija says i extol indra like a woman called gosha 
there is, a, there is another woman called Gosha who found various mantras. Ausija says, I take Gosha, a woman, as a role model in chanting mantras, chant, extolling Indra. This is what he says. These are all very interesting things regarding how Rigveda or Vedic mantras perceive the woman. And now let me come to another thing. This is religious prejudices. In my view, these are the most dangerous prejudices which led to various genocides, holocausts throughout the world in the medieval age. And uh, we need to see how religious prejudices are there in the Veda. Of course, religious prejudices, in my view, are absolutely absent in the Veda. By the way, regarding classes also, I want to add one more thing, class prejudice. In the Veda, there are some negative forces, okay. They are named as Vritras, Panis, Valas and Dasyus. Unfortunately, they are translated as Dravidians. Unfortunately, they are taken to be Dravidians. And uh, it's a mistranslation, very wrong translation. Actually, these are negative forces. Dasyu in any Sanskrit literature means a robber, that's all. Is a thief. Thus you means a Nirdasya Rabaval Lokaha in Valmiki Ramayana. In Ramarajya, Ramarajya was devoid of uh, theft. There Valmiki uses the word Nirdasya. Pani. What, what's the meaning of Pani? Panam. Panam means wealth in Tamil also. Panam. Pani. In the Sanskritam also, Panam means wealth. Pani means one who has always a business attitude. He is called as Pani. Vritra. According to Yaska Maharshi, Vritra means adjunct. Okay. Vala, again Tamil, in Tamil also we use the word Vala. Vala means net in Tamil. Valai. In, in the Vedic language, Vala means Vala Samvarane, binding. Okay. These are negative words in the negative forces. They, these words represent negative forces in the Vedas. They are definitely not Dravidians. Okay. Again, coming back to this religious prejudice. Uh, Rigveda, we all know, Rigveda is well known for its uh, pantheism, polytheism, pluralism. Normally, monotheistic uh, people say, if uh, we have many gods, we will fight each other. But Rigveda is the best example, where in spite of having many gods and goddesses, nowhere, no god is looked down, put down, and no god is ridiculed. All people worshipping all gods lived very peacefully as brethren. This kind of pluralism we see in Rigveda, point number one. And point number two, we see also these kinds of statements, very famous statement, Ekam Sadvipraha Bahuda Vadanti. Reality is one, the seers call that reality in many ways. Ekam Santam Vipraha Bahuda Kalpayanti. And again, this famous statement, Ano Bhadraha Kartavaha Yantu Vishwataha from Rigveda. May all noble thoughts come to us from all corners. You see, such kind of statements. May no, all noble thoughts come from all corners. There is another statement in 10th Mandala, 11th Sukta, 1st Mantra. Manishinaha Prabharaddham Manisham Yatha Yatha Matayas Santi Nrunam. Oh, wise men. You carry your mind to the Upasana, whatsoever are the uh, matis, whatsoever are the thoughts of humans. And uh, if this has to be interpreted, it can be clearly interpreted from the words of Sri Ramakrishna Brahmamsa. What's that word? Jato math, tato path. As many faiths, so many paths. See, exactly this mantra you see, Manishinaha, Prabharadham, Manisham, Yatha, Yatha, Matayas, Santin, Runam. This is what we see. And how the Vedic people saw the atheists. Please see this. How the Vedic seers saw the atheists. Yaitu Mandala, 6th Sukta, 12th Mantra. Etvam Indra na tushtuvuhu, Rushayo yecha tushtuvuhu, Mamed Vardasa sushtutaha. O Indra, there are some seers, there are some wise men who extol you. And there are some wise men who don't extol you. And you are getting gladdened with both of them. And you are growing by both of them. 
this this mantra has to be noted and uh, another mantra from the first mandala 124th sutta 6th mantra eve desha purutama drishekam na ajamim na parivrnati jamim ushas the goddess of dawn the goddess of dawn is guarding blessing both her devotees and non devotees adorers and non adorers bhaktam abhaktam avobhyantah ajaraha agnayah this is from the again the first mandala 127th sukta 5th mantra god is protecting both bhakta and abhakta abhakta see these kinds of mantras they are very important and if a devotee if a devotee if he is uh, not virtuous he worships he extols a god and he is performing rituals yet if he is not virtuous about him what is the view in rigveda this is for first mandala 29th sutta 5th mantra samindra gardhabam rina nuvantam papaya amuya rigveda says he also is punished by god for his karma for his papa this is what the rigveda says this is a very rare thing i here quote uh, paripadal's uh, poem which also says in the same way uh, and uh, how here the veda and the paripadal are sahrudaya potrar uirinum matru atral ilaye potrunar uirinum em atral ilaye ninakku matrorum ilar kelirum ilar paripadal fourth song so here it is clearly told bhagavan has neither friends nor enemies and he rewards the virtuous men and punishes the evil that is the nature of uh, tirumal this this is how it is told let me here quote uh, some two things as examples how hindu dharma sanatana dharma uh, handles this one take for example ravana in our existing hindu dharma ravana is considered to be a great shiva bhakta even though it is not found in valmiki's ramayana up to yuddha kanda anyhow in tradition we have incorporated that element ravana is a great shiva devotee but how shaivism sees ravana shaivism in shaiva siddhanta we have upper story vagisha who dwelt in kailasa he saw how she, ravana was pressed by the lord shiva and ravana was crying vagisha said to him don't cry in this way extol shiva you will be released and for helping ravana in this way he happened to come to the mortal world this is how shaiva siddhantam says which means in in spite of ravana's devotion to shiva shiva was not accepted as an ideal person adarsha purusha by shaivites for your information why i am telling this this kind of this element it's very difficult to find this element in any other religion okay for that i am telling in the same way somebody is not a devotee take for example dr ambedkar ambedkar gave few in few places he gave some derogatory statements against rama and krishna but still rss is well known for defending sanatana dharma this rss people defenders of sanatana dharma they honor dr ambedkar can you see such a kind of thing in any other religion can you show the defenders of islam can honor anybody who gives derogatory statement against allah or muhammad you can't never it cannot happen in christianity too but here in sanatana dharma the defenders of sanatana dharma they they respect dr ambedkar and if you go to an rss person and ask he he has given some derogatory statements against rama and krishna who are you honoring rss person may simply say he will say that he may have some derogatory statement he might have misunderstood in some context rama or krishna but his service to the mankind is extraordinary for which we are ready to revere him 
for your information in previous year in kakinada i went to pay homage to the great shankaracharya in, in his chaturmasya balapariva at that time someone said to me his name is mr vijayan he said to me please wait uh, periva asked you to wait to see a drama here in chaturmasya some skit performance is going to happen please see this and what is about that uh, what's the topic of that skit he said it is about few national leaders like dr ambedkar okay in chaturmasi vrata and i was i and uh, i was seeing and drama is happening perival also sitting and drama's uh, uh, script was written by a very famous pauranika named shri koteshwara uh, koteshwara rao garu and uh, that uh, few minutes for few minutes this, uh, dr ambedkar skit was staged this can be possible only in sanatana dharma okay so very interesting and even now the hindutva uh, sanatana dharma now the existing government central government uh, uh, proclaims itself to be sanatana dharma based with a very great support huge support from the people this government is running having such a huge such a powerful government here in india the other religions the so called minority people they can happily practice their own religions in india and they in public they can do their own worship this is how they all are safe here in india please think compare this with is it possible in few countries several countries in middle east or saudi arabia is that possible the 80% of hindus are here in india and a very powerful government is running which proclaims itself to be a sanatana dharma based government but yet our brothers muslims and christians can be safe and they happily practice their rituals and worship in public so with this i conclude i have come here honoring the great efforts of shri dr swami regarding the uh, hindu dharma elements like rama setu and rama janmabhoomi let us pray for his uh, further efforts and its accomplishments dhanyavada um. wonderfully explained sanatana dharma and its importance to mankind thank you dr rangan ji world renowned economist who played vital role in paving a turning point for indian economy hindu hriday samrat fighting for hindu causes whether it is for ram mandir or ram setu chidambaram nataraja 